a couple weeks ago, I got my very first spinning wheel, the Ashford E3, and I spun up my very first yarn, and then I knit it into this lovely little scarf, the Sophie scarf. Since then, I have actually spun my second spin. This is Lillian Pine BFL wool, and I think it was a Tucson silk. What I did was I spun it fractal, and fractal is just the way you split the fiber, the braid before spinning it and then plying it together. It is a two ply. And today what I wanted to do with you guys is start actually a new spin. I have actually been reading uh, Yarn Architecture, A Knitter's Guide to Spinning, and this book is perfect if you are a knitter who wants to learn how to spin because it looks at spinning from a knitter's perspective. And I have been taking inspiration into figuring out how I want to ply this one or how I want to work this one up because I technically only have three bobbins. I don't have extra ones. So right now, as of right now in the moment, I can only do two ply yarns. But that being said, I have been reading up and just figuring out if I wanted to do a flip spin a fractal or a just gradient spin and i think we're gonna go with a fractal type esque again because i really like the look of fractal so i ended up choosing <laughs> and i went with this braid this would be my second spin from fiber goddess this one is 18.5 micron merino and then baby camel this one's going to be a little bit trickier to spin up, but I thought this is such a pretty, beautiful, but I thought that this is just such a pretty, beautiful braid, and I think I am ready to spin it up. I'm honestly a little bit scared to, like, break this braid up because it is so pretty, but you got to do what you got to do, so let's do it. By the way, again, I forgot to mention this is a four ounce braid and the color is oak, O-O-A-K, oak. I just love these colors. I remember when I picked it up, I actually wanted one with a bit more green, but the only green one that she had at the time, this was like the last stall at Knit City, the only green that she had was like a, um, oops, wrong end. It was like just silk just alpaca and silk and she was like don't do this one you will hate me so i listened am i doing this properly and there you go noodles i have some noodles noodles what i would love to do with this one is actually spin it and then use it with like a white as like a color contrast for my hand spun for like a, a knit project. One issue is I can't actually weigh this because my scale battery is dead. So that means um, we're kind of going to go by feel, I'm assuming. Damn, I should have bought batteries. I quickly, super quickly just turned it on and it was working for like a second. So I just quickly, quickly like weighed it. I think because I let it sit on the side, the battery must have just like recharged a little bit because last time it was dead, dead, dead. So I did it as fast as I could just that's why I don't I didn't film it I ended up just splitting it into grams of 54 they're 55 grams each this one we will spin single just leave it as is and then this one I'm just gonna break it up into sections of do I do three or four last time I did four I think we'll do one of the reasons you'd want to do fractal is, as you can see here, it goes from gray to green to then teal in this like change as you spin it because you're leaving it the original way. It's going to be really, really long. And then what, when you split this one into smaller color section, like in this teal, for example, you'll get like a gray, a green, and you'll go through the colors a lot faster on one side so that when you ply them together, 
that's when you end up having that like marled color effect. We'll go a little bit slower this time and we're gonna split it into three just to see how it works. So I have my one little off. Basically, I'm just gonna take the braid because I don't want the color transition to happen as quickly. The last important part before spinning is determining your staple length. So here I have a little bit of wool and if I just pull it, see where it separates. So this would be about the staple length, not the thin parts, but the thicker part. So from here to here, I would say, and this just off the top of my head, I would guess is maybe four inches. The past two ones have been about six. So this will be definitely a little bit trickier of a spin just because my hands are going to have to get closer together. It's also really silky soft, so it might be slippery. So that's something else I'm going to have to consider but the color is just beautiful. So I have these handy little wooden guides. Uh, one is the wraps per inches and then needle to figure out which needle size you're using. And then the other one has a little info on like thickness of yarns and then your uh, twist kind of percentage. I have decided for this spin to go with 14 wraps so that when I apply them together, it can equal a DK weight. And then for this guy, I have decided a 30% twist. That'll be when plying, but when I ply, I want to ply with a 30% twist. I think most spinners ply within 30 to 40% about, if I'm right. I've also decided to start with the biggest chunk first to get to see how that goes. Um, and we're just gonna be spinning. And I'm going to be starting in a Z twist so that when I apply it, I apply it in an S twist. I'm just going to quickly look up. Do you knit with an S twist or a Z twist? Okay. Traditionally speaking, when spinning a single yarn, one bobbin, you use a Z twist. Then you go to ply that bobbin either by applying additional singles or using a chain ply, you will then use an S twist. So that is what Google tells me and that is what we are going to do. I think basically it really depends on you as a knitter or as a spinner what you want. When you buy yarns, some of them are spun S twist, some of them are spun Z twist. They do knit up quite differently, but again, it's what it's what is your preference? I think for this one, I'm just gonna spin with a short draw method. Uh, last time I tried to do from the fold, it's just really hard to reattach yarn and I just think I need to practice more with this method before trying a different spinning technique. Oh, ho, ho. Okay. Maybe I should get a spin first and then we can talk. So I did have to adjust my tension and I just put a pillow on my lap where I have the guide right here to help me because for some weird reason, I think I, like with my knitting, I tend to knit very tightly and I think I'm a tight spinner. So what ends up happening is I, with the twist that the machine naturally adds, it spins very fast. I pull really like small amount. I don't really have a loose grip. So it's resulting in a very thin yarn. So we're gonna try, I think 14 is just too thick for me right now, 14 wraps per inch. So I think what we're gonna aim for is 18. That's a little bit more realistic for me. And 18 is still gonna give me, uh, two 18 singles together is still gonna give me hopefully a thicker yarn than a fingering. We'll see once it washes and blocks and blooms. So I'm just spinning a little bit looser 
than I normally would because the more twist you add, the tighter it gets. I'm more at an 18 than I could even be at a 22. So it's been a couple days that this has just been laying around and kind of resting. I did, once I finished the second bobbin, notice that it was a lot thicker than the first. So I unraveled a lot, went back, like passed it back through my machine and just really tried to like split up the places that were really chunky because for some weird reason, the second spin had some really chunky parts. I don't know what that did. <laughs> necessarily I might have ruined the spin I hope not but we'll see when we apply it because I just now feared that I might have just get you a little closer I basically just now fear that I might have made it too thin or some parts are too thin we'll see so this one is the first this is the second I did weigh them and they weigh about the same this is what the singles look like. I honestly love the teal with the gray. I think it looks so good and we'll see what happens when we'll see what happens when they get together. I think this is the thickest yarn I've ever spun, which is exactly what I wanted it to be. Um, it is just such a thick, such a thick piece. Where did I put? Mm. Unwashed and unblocked. Now some pieces are a little bit thinner as always. It kind of thicks in and out, but this one I would say is like a 10 nine or 10 in thickness, which means, let me go get my other little nine or 10. Six to nine is bulky, nine to 12 is medium. So it's between a bulky or a medium right now, unwashed. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna remove this. So this is how much I ended up spinning. On my other spins, I was able to spin 
260 yards, I think. And here I just have 130. So this already is about half of what I normally spin, but it is because it is a much thicker spin. Focus. Is it not going to? I think it's focused. But so far, I really love the deep emerald kind of green and is it emerald? And the teal. I love it. So I'm going to go soak this in water, hang it to dry, and we'll catch up. This is what the yarn looks like. I'm obsessed. It smells so good. So now that this is washed, locked, and I did do the, I forget what that's called. So my yarn is basically ready to be kicked up and knit up. And I think I ended up with a sort of worsted weight because it is very similar to this one. I did measure it. Now some parts are thinner and some parts are thicker. But this is a worsted skein I got from Longway Homestead in their wool uh, border cheviot. I did, I do have this beautiful wool that I want to knit up. And I also have this gorgeous Icelandic wool from Longway Homestead again, another subscription box. And I know that in the past I said I wanted to knit this up with another yarn, but I think that this would work beautifully with my hand spun yarn. So I'm going to currently cast on knit up a swatch and I think I'm going to make a jumper. And the reason why I decided to add this as a color work as an accent color is because of this image right here. This is, I actually really like these types of stripes and this type of color work. So I want to do that with this one being the second color, the white being the main, this one being more or less the second, and then the third being the gray. But these are different wools completely. So this one was a merino silk, but these are all different wools, and they're going to be spun in different ways. So we'll see what ends up happening when I knit up the swatch, because the gray is a single spun, this one is a three-ply, and then mine is a two-ply, because I need to order more bobbins. So this is the swatch that I came up with, with the three different yarns, the white, the gray, and the green type of blue. I think that this looks really pretty and really fun. And I actually am right now just going to knit up another swatch, but just with this wool so I can show you guys what it actually looks like. So I can better show you guys my spin and what the fiber actually looks like. So one. I am so not used to knitting with such a thick yarn because this literally took me like maybe 10 minutes to knit up. Actually, it was like three songs. So yeah, maybe 10 minutes. 
So these are both the swatches, one of them with the color work, one of them just knit up. I ended up knitting these on thicker needles. So these are Chiagu 10 six millimeter needles. I rarely ever reach for knitting needles that are this thick. I think I'm gonna go with like a color work type with these three. I don't know if this is the exact design I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go back to my drawing board, but I just wanted to see the three fibers colors play along together the skein for some reason i think it's because it's the end of the spin this was my most like my smallest skein and it had a lot of the blue and teal in it so i'm expecting the rest not to be as blue as this one uh, this was just one part of the roving that had like a really big blue chunk but i think in the end these two are very successful so i hope to cast on this project really really soon and knit up a sweater vest if you guys enjoy this type of video or if you guys enjoy spinning, knitting, all things fiber related, click that subscribe button down below, like the video, and as always, have a beautiful, lovely weekend, week, whatever time it is, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye!